What up? This is a clip from our big NCAA basketball show. Let's get paid in full. Let's eat. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching odds.com. Let's have a big weekend. We move on. But we stay in the Patriot League. Boston University Terriers, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 and 5. All their games are being played in conference. They had no non conference opponents, no non conference games. Neither did Lafayette, who also stayed in conference for their season so far. And they are 5 and 1. They, Lafayette opened their season losing their first game and winning five straight. Boston University had the opposite. They opened with a win at Holy Cross before losing five straight. Let's see what we are talking about from a market perspective here right now. What has happened? Let me reload this page. Sorry, it was all good to go. And here we go. 4 p.m. Eastern, Boston University Terriers. Waiting for this to come up. I'm sorry that it was uh, that I lost it. And here we go. We are in business. At 4 p.m., we have Lafayette opening up as six and a half point favorites. That quickly moves to seven and then to seven and a half. This total opened up at 145 and a half and it is dropping. We see 145s and now we see 144 and a half on the board. We're at Kirby Sports Center in Easton, Pennsylvania. After winning their first game of the season, January 17th at home versus Holy Cross, Boston University's looked awful. They're coming off getting swept in two games at home last weekend by Army, with each coming by double digits. Leading scorer, senior guard Javante McCoy went for 21 points. He's averaging 17.3 on the season. Two other players averaged double digits in 6'6", senior guard Walter White at 13.8 points. And 6'10", senior forward Suk Mail Mathen, who averages 11 points and 6.7 boards. Boston University scores just 66.2 points per game. Gets almost no distribution. Eight and a half assists per game. I believe that's the lowest number I've given out throughout our entire year of working together, Max. Just eight and a half assists per game. They shoot poorly, 40.5% from the field and ugly at, from three, 26.5% of the uh, from the three. They do hit their foul shots, though, 74.4% from the strike. After losing their first game of the season at Lehigh, Lafayette is rolling, coming off sweeping a very tight home and home with Loyola, Maryland. On Saturday, Sunday, winning the first 77-75, the second 72-70. Max has talked on this show about his love for Jaws. Senior guard Justin Jaworski, 23 points per game, hitting 47.7% from three. Backcourt teammate senior EJ Stevens is second, averaging 17.8 points per game. This team can shoot. They average 45.4% from the field, 41.2% from three, and 81.7% from the foul line. Numbers that the governor likes. Max, take it away. Boston University, Lafayette. Yeah, listen, Jim, Boston came into this season with a lot of high expectations, and they haven't really been healthy enough to try and start meeting them. So there definitely is the fear, for me at least in this game, that this could be the the game and time that BU comes out. And like I like to say often on my Patreon streams, fucks with your eyes open. So... With BU, now they're healthy, but they're just not clicking. I think that with Damon Tate only playing six minutes in the last game is really showing a reliance from the coaching staff that they want to get as many minutes for Javante McCoy and Walter White together on the floor as possible, which I personally think is a mistake because Damon Tate is shooting 52% from the three-point line. Uh, so far this year. With BU, we've seen them struggle offensively with four games where they failed to reach 70 points or higher, and they could be in what you would classify as a desperate situation. I think that with BU, if you've been backing them, and I've been the victim of it, they've been burning your money. So it is a little difficult for me to find away onto this team when they really aren't having the three-point success that you're accustomed to. This is a team that is used to shooting volume threes, and with their two best players shooting under 20%, it's just not working. I think that with Lafayette, the key is how they can defend this Lafayette perimeter attack. You know that Jaws is going to do some work, and in the last game that BU played versus Lafayette, Jaws was injured. So I do think that Lafayette 
comes out at home where the offense has really flowed and gets started early. The thing I like about Lafayette is they're a great starter. They've been a bit shaky late in games, and that caused them to lose the Lehigh game where they had to go to overtime. I think that with Lafayette, one of the keys in this game is going to obviously be how they shoot the ball from the perimeter and how they mix their offense up to get scores from all three levels. We know that with EJ Stevens, he's playing that six-man role, but I think that in this game t tomorrow or today, he's going to have some matchup advantages, some quickness advantages. But if BU can slow the tempo down and really play a lot of back-to-the-basket isolation-type ball, getting the ball to Matan and giving the ball to Jack Hempel down low, well, that could be problematic. In the end, though, what I decided was, while I do think Boston University is going to be able to do a good job on the offensive glass, use that size advantage that they're going to have against Neil Quinn and get some offensive rebounds, get to the free throw line, make some free throws, make some close proximity buckets, I just think that in the end, what Lafayette does well is they shoot a lot of threes and they make a high percentage of them. They're one of the best in the nation at doing that. And when you're able to do that on the road and at home, you're very dangerous. And that's BU's kryptonite when it comes to their defense. They're allowing you to make close to four out of every 10 threes. So in my opinion, I think that with – Lafayette, there's some very simple for there's a very simple formula to win and cover this game. Start off with a good half, good first half, where you've been on average 11 points better by my numbers, and you've been able to put up 43 points or more in first halves. You've been good for 75 most games, so if you can stay on that kind of scoring tempo and pace, you're going to be able to win this game. You're going to probably be able to cover it as well. With 10 and a half threes that you're making, you got to keep that up, if not outdo that. And you have to start getting more trips to the free throw line. You have capable free throw shooters. Why not take advantage of your driving and good ball movement to get to the free throw line and make the po score points with the clock stopped? Another thing, takeaways. You can force this Boston University team that sometimes makes some predictable passes into some fast break opportunities. I think ball movement is key. When you have an assist turnover ratio of over two to one as a team, that gets me going. And I think that Lafayette's going to win this game. I think that they're going to get this game over. And I think BU's going to do their part. If BU hits 70, I think Lafayette's hitting 80. So I'll take the over again, and I'll take Lafayette. Well, let's start by getting you Lafayette, a very nice breakdown from the governor of the Patriot League, and here we go. The Lafayette spot market moving quickly as we speak here. Oh, man, there's so many games. I apologize when I'm moving things around. We have the 7 at minus 110 available. Let's see, can Circa beat that? Because a lot of books have moved to 7.5. And, and let's see if we can – Beat that line shopping anywhere. And uh, no, uh, seven at minus 110 is our best number. Are you all right with that? Uh, yeah, I'm fine with that. I got six and a half, so I'm good with that. And just uh, FYI, Jim, I believe that that line actually opened at nine and a half or 10 on Circa this afternoon. Holy. And then got steamed down. So wow. There definitely is the belief out there that BU could snap out of their conundrum that they've started the season with tomorrow, but not against my Leopards. No, not happening. Minus 7, minus 110 at DraftKings. So we'll start there. And then we have a total that you're looking at. So we're seeing 144.5 at FanDuel. Let's see if I can beat that here right now. See if we can get Max something better. And no, Fox bets move to 145. These are sort of juiced at 144 and a half. At least FanDuel is not juiced. So uh, we'll take the over 144. Oh, no, that's juiced to minus 114. Excuse me. Let's see if Circa can get you something not juiced. 
Sorry about that. Max has the very difficult task of only being able to use licensed books. 144 and a half here at minus 110 at Circa. All right. Sounds good. Over 144 and a half at minus 110. Available at Circa Sports. 